What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Chill, where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the July 25th, 2022 edition of Raw Talk. Jackie Redman, Matt Camp, back in the studio, breaking down the Go Home Raw before SummerSlam this Saturday and the newest Raw of the Triple H era of WWE. As it was announced early on Monday morning, Triple H is now heading creative for this company. Very exciting news. I hope this leads to a lot of positive change. I think it will. I want to be realistic, but I also want to be optimistic as well. I think it will. Give it time. We did see some small changes, I thought, watching the show last night. And I could be wrong. I might be reaching. It was a good, solid show in Madison Square Garden. And uh, it wasn't a drastically different show than what we've been getting from Raw in recent months, years, whatever. But it was an improvement, I thought. So to start off Raw Talk here, Camp and Redmond run down the biggest headlines from Raw, including Rey Mysterio's 20-year celebration of his debut from 20 years ago yesterday. Uh, they replay the Rey Mysterio promo, recap the subsequent tag team match, where he and Dominic knocked off uh, Judgment Day's Finn Balor and Damian Priest in tag team action. They also show the attack with Rhea Ripley coming back, Rhea Ripley returning and uh, helping Finn and Damian lay out the Mysterios backstage. Also, speaking of backstage, we also hear from Judgment Day itself, all of Judgment Day, Rhea Ripley, Finn Balor, Damian Priest. They celebrate not Ray's anniversary, but Balor's birthday, which was also yesterday as well. And they claim the Mysterios will fall at SummerSlam. They had a cake in their hand as well, and that was it. In the studio, JBL joins uh, Jackie and Matt Camp and says that Rey Mysterio is one of the greatest ever, talks the importance of Madison Square Garden and the fact that his anniversary happened at such an important you know, city and whatnot. Um, they also replay the Bianca Belair-Becky Lynch brawl from Raw uh, before promoting their SummerSlam match. They also recap Alexa Bliss knocking off Dewdrop and recap the impulsive t uh, TV segment with The Miz, Logan Paul, Ciampa, and Maurice. Backstage, we catch up with Ciampa, Miz, and Maurice. Miz and Maurice saying nothing. This was all Ciampa. Ciampa takes the mic from, I think it was Sarah Schreiber or Kevin Patrick, I don't remember. But he just goes off, as he did a couple of weeks ago, on how, oh, they call Logan Paul the most famous... You know, celebrity Miz is the most famous or musty superstar in WWE. He's a two-time Grand Slam champion. He's done this. He's done that. He's headlined WrestleMania, kind of playing up Miz's accolades. And he says that Logan Paul is coming into their home, and he is not invited. And he got really, like, amped up as he did, as he did a couple of weeks ago here on Raw Talk. I wish we got these promos from Ciampa on Raw itself. And he wasn't just on the show beating up whoever, Logan Ball or whoever. Like, we just see him doing the same shit every week on the show, and he barely gets any mic time. I know... Miz is doing the talking for him, and Miz is a tremendous talker, but I wish we would get to hear more from Ciampa himself and not just all Miz on Raw, because this was really, really good. Honestly, listening to this promo from Ciampa, it sounded like a tryout promo for the new boss, Triple H, because Ciampa's a big Triple H guy, and vice versa, so I would hope he has more fortune in the Triple H era of WWE, time will tell. I'm not exactly optimistic, because, you know, he's not damaged goods by any means, but Time will tell. Uh, but I hope Ciampa gets more of a push in the Triple H creative regime of WWE than he did under the uh, regime of Vince McMahon creatively. But anyway, so Matt Camp says that Ciampa was showing respect to Miz. And this SummerSlam match between Miz and Logan Paul at SummerSlam has gotten personal. Uh, they also replay the ending to the show that saw uh, the bloodline. I forgot what even what the ending was. The bloodline knock off Riddle in the uh, Street Profits and Tag Team action before Rollins laid out Riddle on the steel steps with a curb stomp. They also recap Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley, uh, beating the team of Sheamus and Theory in tag team action. We hear backstage from Kevin Patrick and Bobby Lashley, the United States champion. Before they even get the interview started, they cut backstage. Kevin and Bobby were already talking, in the midst of a conversation about chocolate chip cookies, which, one of the most wholesome moments I have ever seen on the show. I fucking love Kevin Patrick, and I fucking love Bobby Lashley. That was one of my favorite Raw Talk moments, not involving Kevin Owens on this show in quite some time. That was great. But anyway, they get to the interview. It was short and sweet. Uh, Bobby said it felt good to beat up Theory, and he needs to humble himself. As far as Drew goes and teaming with him, Drew always brings out the best in him, whether it be as a partner or as an opponent. And he's pulling for Drew to beat Sheamus on Friday, and the good old-fashioned Donnybrook match, become the number one contender to the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, and then from there, beat Roman Reigns at the Clash of the Castle pay-per-view so he can then face Drew for that championship and they can fight again. GBL says it's very likely that Theory could cash in and win at SummerSlam, depending on whether you know he beats Bobby Lashley or whatever, and then from there, they kind of give their predictions for each match. 
they were pretty split. Very rarely did they agree on any match. But um, JBL picks Miz to win against uh, Logan Paul. Matt Camp picks Logan Paul. JBL picks Riddle to win. Matt Camp picks Rollins, given his SummerSlam resume. JBL and Matt Camp both pick Liv Morgan to beat Ronda Rousey, interestingly, to retain the SmackDown Women's Championship. You would think one of them, if not both of them, would choose Rousey because she is such a favorite going into the match as far as, like, Liv beating her straight up is a bit, not unrealistic, but it is unlikely. Um, she'll probably win. I, I am picking Liv to win somehow, some way. I assume maybe Charlotte comes back and costs Ronda the win. I am picking Liv as well, but it was interesting they picked Liv here as well. Um, anyway, so JBL picks Corbin to beat McAfee. Matt Camp picks McAfee. JBL picks the Usos to retain the undisputed WWE Tag Team titles. Matt Camp picks the Profits. They're at a bit of a crosshairs right now, he says, and this is a do-or-die situation for them. JBL picks Mysterios, uh, the Mysterios to beat the Judgment Day. Matt Camp picks the Judgment Day, citing Rhea Ripley as the uh, the X Factor there with her being back. Both of them pick Bianca Belair to win, or rather retain, the Raw Women's Championship. And then JBL picks Brock Lesnar to win the undisputed WWE Universal title. And Matt Camp, as always, picks Roman Reigns. He cannot bet against the champ. And then to close out the show, they promote Jeff Jarrett and Dolph Ziggler for the bump on Wednesday. A uh, good addition to Raw Talk here. I like the Bobby Lashley interview. without Jackie and Matt were good at their analysis. JBL was fine. His service was a bit better this time than he was than it was the last time he was on the show a couple of weeks ago on Talking Smack or whatever. Uh, Ciampa's promo was great. And we also heard from, yeah, Ciampa. We heard from uh, Bobby. Who else did we hear from? Oh, The Judgment Day. And I, I, I thought their promo was good too. So one of the better editions of Raw Talk in recent memory. Maybe Raw Talk will improve along with Raw itself now that Triple H is in charge. I doubt it, but the show is uh, pretty good for this week by Raw Talk standards. Thank you guys for checking out my review. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content and plenty of more content coming here to the channel this week between hashtag AskGSM episode, I think 451, 452 tomorrow. We got more interviews. A Liv Morgan interview dropped tomorrow, or yesterday rather. Another one's dropping, I think, on Friday here on the channel. More Death Before Dishonor live reactions, SummerSlam live reactions, a lot like last year, WrestleRant Radio excerpts, Miss Marvel review, and so much more. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. You will never miss a video as long as you hit that uh, bell button to be notified every time a new video goes up. So have a great one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.